Hey, what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And today we're going to be talking about American Horror Stories Season 2, Episode 5. And in this episode, we have ourselves five strong black women leads. So I don't know why these girls was in the mirror calling on Bloody Mary. They should know better. My mama always told me, don't be doing that. Don't be calling on no Bloody Mary, no Candy Man, nothing like that. I'm scared to say Bloody Mary too many times in this video. She might pop up behind me. Two of these girls, mama, we already know she probably haven't even said 21 words to them in their whole life. So, of course, she didn't warn them about no Bloody Mary. So, anyway, these girls are having a slumber party and one of them gets the bright idea to call on Bloody Mary. So, this girl right here, Lena, had the bright idea to light up some candles get in front of the mirror and say Bloody Mary three times like an idiot. At the first attempt, Bianca quit. She left out the bathroom and she said, this isn't funny. And I'm like, I'm with Bianca. I would have left out of there with Bianca. When I was in school and people were like, let's play Bloody Mary, I ran too. But what I didn't do is go back and play it anyway after I said I wasn't going to do it. So all four of them go in front of the mirror separately and they call on Bloody Mary. And of course, she pops up because... They called her and when she appeared it looked like she killed one of the girls but it turned out to just be an illusion but what she did do when she popped up was whisper something in each one of their ears now let's stop and take a second to appreciate the legendary and iconic dominique jackson herself the queen of ballroom she did a great job as bloody mary now let's get to what was whispered to them she told Maggie that if she wants this boy to be her boyfriend, then she has to leak his current girlfriend's nudes. She told Bianca that if she wants to get into Yale, then she has to tell everybody that her guidance counselor was molesting her. Then she tells Nina that if she wants to be cheer captain, that she has to drop the current captain when she gets on top of the pyramid. Don't catch her, girl. And they all shared this with each other, but who didn't share was Elise. She didn't tell them what Bloody Mary whispered into her ear. She started to, but she stopped mid-sentence. And I was like, something wrong with that. And you can tell by the way that she started looking at her sister that something was wrong. Elise and Bianca are sisters. And my first thought was that Bloody Mary told Elise to kill her sister for some reason, but that was just my first thought. So since the slumber party is now ruined because they wanted to do something dumb, Elise and Bianca went home. And when they got home, their mom was like, uh-uh, what you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. And you can tell that their mom is strung out on something. She's not a good mom. She's trying to get it in with this man on the couch. She don't want to see her daughters there. She said, uh-uh, get out my house. So that meant that Elise and Bianca had to go sleep in the car. So now it's the next day and we see them in school and Bloody Mary appears in the mirror in their class. And of course they all start freaking out. They run out the classroom. And when they get outside, they find out that Lena knows a lot more about Bloody Mary than she's been putting on. And that right there, would have made me wanted to throw some hands and some elbows. She started talking about how her mama wasn't invited to this number party, but that was a good thing because everybody there ended up dying one by one or put into a psych ward. And they were like, why you didn't tell us this for? So now Lena's freaked out, everybody's freaked out, and Lena's like, well, I'm gonna do what Bloody Mary told me to do because I don't wanna end up dead, so I'm gonna have to drop this girl from the pyramid. So while they were at practice, she thought about it, but she couldn't do it, she backed out, and that cost her her life because later on that day, she died, her eyes was pulled up out of her head. She didn't have no more eyeballs. Her parents found her in the bathtub and the police is like, well, maybe a homeless man followed her home and tried to rob her, what? So what? He That didn't make no sense to me. So Maggie finds this out. She runs to go tell Bianca and Elise. And Elise is promising her sister that this won't happen to her. She's going to find out everything about Bloody Mary. Because Bianca's like, I don't want to have to lie and tell everybody that my guidance counselor has been molesting me when he hasn't. Even though he does seem like a creep. Because there was no reason for him to put his hand on top of her hand when she was in there talking to him, talking about college. So Elise's sneaky self is doing research about Bloody Mary like she said she was. And at first, when she was doing her research, it seemed like Bloody Mary was a slave catcher by the name of Margaret Worth. But after she spoke to this man who works at the museum and all that, she finds out that Margaret Worth wasn't Bloody Mary. She was a slave catcher. 
Bloody Mary was actually a slave captured by Margaret Worth. With the help of another slave, a traitor, a female Uncle Tom, Elise found all of this out by doing her research and going to the museum, speaking to this man who told her that Margaret's house was like this reverse underground railroad where the slaves thought that they were safe, but they ended up being tricked and recaptured. Bloody Mary was one of the slaves in Margaret's house being tricked and was going to be recaptured. So Elise tells her sister Bianca this information that she finds out and tells her that they have to go back to the museum to get the knife that Bloody Mary killed Margaret with because that's the only way to get out of this whole thing. So the museum was closing but Bianca talked her way back inside acting like she needed information for a book report while her sister was over there stealing this knife. So when she gets the knife, she's like, okay, we have to get Maggie. Maggie has to go with us to Margaret's house. But once they get to Maggie's house, they find her up in there dead too with her eyes snatched out, all because she didn't want to leak this girl's news. Or this sex tape that she found out that this girl had where the guy in the tape wasn't her boyfriend. She had some juicy information, but she didn't leak it. So now it's only two of them left, Elise and Bianca, and they go to Margaret Worth's house. And during this whole scene, I'm thinking something's up with Elise. You can't trust the girl. You better run. You better run, Bianca. But Bianca was still following behind her sister because that's her sister. She trusted her. So when they get there, Bloody Mary appears in this mirror and she asked Elise, did you bring everything? And Bianca's like, what's going on? That's when Elise tells her that the night of the slumber party, Bloody Mary offered her the world. We then see a flashback of Bloody Mary telling Elise that night that she popped up out of that mirror that it's not that she wants to be rich, but it's that she really wants safety, security, and power. She also tells her that if she brings her a dagger and blood of three innocents that she'll never have to sleep in the car again or be hungry. So it turned out that Elise was the one who killed both of her friends and she was about to kill her sister Bianca too. That's why she went back to that museum to get that knife because Bloody Mary needs that dagger. Elise came prepared with the blood of two innocents already, her friends, and now she was about to give Bloody Mary her sister's blood, but Bianca got the last laugh because she was the one who ended up killing her sister Elise. Stabbed her right in the eyeball, and then that's when Bianca looks at Bloody Mary and says, do what you gotta do, you gotta kill me or what? And then that's when Bloody Mary tells her that she doesn't kill people. People kill them for her, and Bloody Mary tells Bianca that she just reflects truth back. People face what's in their soul. And Bloody Mary tells Bianca that she's still innocent because she just did what she had to do. She was being attacked and she reacted. So don't feel bad about killing your sister girl. In between all this, we see how she became Bloody Mary in the first place while she was down there being captured and someone tried to take her son away. She ended up looking into the mirror for the first time in a long time. And that's when she realized who she really was. So that's when she started killing up everybody. She killed Uncle Tom, she killed Margaret Worth, and the people that came to take them back to their owners. All she had to do was raise up her hands and people neck snapped and she started stabbing up the people. So Bianca ends up cutting her hand with this dagger and she puts some blood into the cup. She then gives it to Bloody Mary and when she does that, Bloody Mary is then freed. But it turns out that when Bloody Mary is freed, she is replaced and guess who she's replaced with bianca bianca is now stuck in the mirror bianca is now bloody mary she's screaming let me out let me out let me out but it's too late girl you are now the new bloody mary you should have trusted your first instincts girl and never played that game and we see her first victim and this makes me want to see a part two so i want to see how Bianca is acting out here as a Bloody Mary. Let me know how y'all felt about this episode because I really liked it. 
I couldn't bring myself to do episode four last week. I could barely get through the episode. I said, I'm not going to do this to myself. I won't bring y'all something I'm not feeling because it wouldn't come off right. And if next week's episode is bad, I'll be skipping that one too. This time I had to come back and recap episode five. But like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.